first quarry has been built, there's some smaller details missing, like you still need to get the Frostwalker boots and the armor stands in, but it's 99% finished now. You still also need to check for mistakes we made. But yeah, it took us about 5 days to build this up, so real life days. It was actually quite good, surprised that we managed to do it this quickly. The last quarry took us a couple weeks, so there was a lot of people helping this time. Tap was streaming quite a lot, Sky Rising as well, so many people helping again. It's insane we finished this so quickly. In total it was about, didn't really keep exact track of it, 100 to 120 man hours. Okay, motivation is right now really low to build this a second time, but once this thing is running we can also start uh, the second quarry over here. There's also more work ahead of us. The quarry can't handle non movable blocks like obsidian, chests and spawners at all. It would run into it and crash if you wouldn't remove those. So in order to do so, Massa and Sky Racing made a list that guides us towards all the locations where we can find obsidian, chests and spawners. It's actually quite a lot this time. Last time the quarry um, wasn't mining below Y10. This time it does. That's why we also got all the obsidian that is usually at Y10 in the way of the quarry. So that's about 6,000 obsidian blocks we need to take out and about 100 chests and spawners. It's quite a lot of work. So I've been already tunneling around in order to find that obsidian. So the next item in the list is 100 blocks away. In order to get there a bit quicker, we of course use the elytra trick to make one by one tunnels. We just have to go 80 blocks in that direction and hopefully we'll find that obsidian. Yep, there we go. It's the next water source we have to remove and mine the obsidian. Right, I've been doing this for two hours yesterday already and Scarising also put a progress function or progress display into the list. 18% of the obsidian is taken out by now, so it's gonna take about 10 hours more to do all of that. That's enough work on the quarry for now, continue in the next episode. Now let's work on a fun little contraption. You might know that we have to scroll the store double chest of each stack of item. Within reason of course, we're not gonna get each banner variation you can create or each firework rocket you can create. Um, but there is one item we could easily store as well, which we don't do so, anvils. So we store the normal anvils, but of course you can also get anvil variants at the moment which is going into our overflow. So if you drop an anvil or you use it often enough then it, there's a chance it would get damaged. Not even sure at the moment it's a cold if an anvil would get damaged. I think we have to stack a bit higher to get one of those. There's two more types. So I think it's called chipped anvil. Okay there we got one. What's it called? Slightly damaged anvil. There's also uh, even more damaged anvil. Yeah, so there might actually be a reason to store those as well. If somebody wants to use the, yeah, the, the damaged anvils as a decoration, then at the moment we don't store those. And there's also no contraption that um, makes the task of creating those a bit easier. So of course, would be way too much work to, I don't know, combine uh, books with the anvils and then break them or do so. But yeah, dropping them down seems to be like the best approach. So in order to figure out the anvil damaging system and in order to design a contraption later, I switched to the creative world. According to the wiki, there is a number of blocks fallen times 5% chance that an anvil would degrade by one stage. So that would only affect dropping distances higher than a block. So an animal can always drop down a single block without getting damaged. So in theory, if I should put this one higher, then there should be a two blocks dropped times five. 10% chance that the animal would get damaged if I drop, drop it from this height. And if I would drop it from 
21 blocks. So up here there should be a 100% chance that the uh, anvil degrades by one stage. That seems to be the case, so I tried this out quite, quite often already. And so far this always happened. Okay. I was also curious if maybe if we go up even higher, if there's a chance that yeah, the animal would degrade two stages. That doesn't seem to be the case. If we drop it down 100 blocks, it's also not very damaged, it's still slightly damaged. Also found out uh, what the, <laughs> the other stage is called, it's the very damaged anvil. Oh, making this contraption will probably be easier than I anticipated. I was curious what would happen if we would um, put a yeah, slab or carpet at the bottom, uh, which causes the animal to drop in item form instead of getting put into block form again. And to my surprise, the animal also gets damaged. So we don't need to even worry about some kind of a redstone contraption to break the anvil somehow after it has fallen down. Just need to drop in a carpet, that's it. So I guess the contraption would actually look like this. A K player gets supplied with anvils and drops it down and then we have a hopper below the carpet or slab. It's almost too boring. <laughs> um, then at least we should figure out a contraption um, to get the very damaged anvil directly from the anvil. So in order to do that we would need to let it drop down, uh, land, be converted into block form and let it drop down again. Then we can yeah, collect it with the carpet method. At least that's something we can try to create. Oh man, this is almost too easy as well. So all we need is basically an observer and a sticky piston there. The anvil falls down, observer detects it. Sticky piston pulls in the block, anvil falls down, so it detects it, sticky piston pushes block out. And this is actually also working the speed the player would be placing the anvils. So all we gotta do is AFK up here, place anvils and collect very damaged anvils at the bottom. Now we want to add a switch in order to select between slightly damaged anvil and very damaged anvil. It's also not too complicated. All we gotta do is add a sticky piston there, add a lever. If you want slightly damaged anvils, we just drop them down here. If you want very damaged anvils, drop them down here. I also figured out in which frequency the player would place those anvils. So we got a stopwatch and just timed 20 anvils. It seems like you would place an anvil every 0 0.6 seconds or every 12 ticks. So if you want to add a dropper on the side, it would supply us with fresh anvils. So you could AFK the whole thing. You just need to add a little clock like this one here. That's just an observer clock that we would activate another lever. And this should in theory be the perfect speed to be supplied with anvils. Okay, let's put a couple in there. Just gonna take like three, go in survival mode. Let's see if this is working out. Yep. We stay at the same amount of anvils. So back in survival, now we need to decide where to build the complicated anvil damaging system. So either we do something temporary in the spawn chunks again, then we remove later, or we build something at the main storage area. So in case we use up our damaged anvils, we can get more later. Let's say we build something at the main storage area. All right. Actually, I could show a bit of progress that was done to the main storage area. Some people got bored apparently and started digging below the main storage. <laughs> and they dug out all the chunks now so we can see the, the chunk loading system from here and, and, and <laughs> yeah, you can see the main storage at the top. It's nice I guess. <laughs> okay. Now location for this annual damaging system. If I can make my way back in. Yep. So I was thinking maybe next to this elevator here, if there is some space behind the wall. 
Oh. Wasch mir die isn't. Der ist aber... Bedroom? <lacht> I don't know then. We'll find something. I think I found a nice spot in this wing here, next to our grass farm. So here we got a lot of testing results when I try to find out what's the best way or the fastest way to get diamonds. I guess we can remove that again. I mean, it's documented in the video now. So, branch mining, 120 diamonds and so on. In the end, by far, the clear winner is definitely the tunnel bore. Okay. So we got it in the video. I can remove that and build it up here. Okay, here it is. Our very high-tech AFK anvil damaging system. Complete with degradation control. Awesome. Okay, so you put the anvils into this chest, you trickle into the dropper, then you turn it on here, and aim at the sea lantern. So there might be an issue with lag spikes though. Like we just had. I hope that doesn't break the system with the observer at the bottom. But so far, it's looking good. So what I didn't add is some kind of an item elevator to bring the damage the animals back up. We have to take them from below. But we do have an elevator to get down there. Or back up rather. <laughs> Just jump down. Yeah, this was the system used the last time to get the clay balls. Then we can pick the bu them up here. Very damaged anvil. Okay, I had an item filter in the back. Now we also need to make those anvils. Of course we won't use gravity block tubing for the portals to get those anvils. We can just go to our iron farm and grab it or the materials for it out of the chests. So we have enough um, iron blocks and also iron ingots for the anvils. And it's done. Now we got a double chest worth of very damaged anvil and slightly damaged anvil. There was a little issue with the contraption as I was speculating earlier. It could happen during some uh, little lag spikes that the client wouldn't place blocks reliably with the same interval. And then it happened that uh, the observer sticky piston system at the bottom failed and the animals were piling up. So I just fixed this by slowing the contraption down a little bit. Instead of every 12 ticks, I dispense it every 16 ticks and then it worked fine. Got a complete double chest out of it. All right, then, yeah, more good news. In between, we've been also removing a lot more obsidian. There's like 200 obsidian blocks left to remove for the quarry. So it's almost finished, so we can yeah, launch the quarry soon. But that's it for today. Thanks guys for watching. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.